Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, the U.S. Supreme Court makes a decision on an emergency appeal regarding the new abortion law here in Texas. And emergency crews respond to a near drowning on the city's northeast side last night. Outside with live cam, we almost hit 100 yesterday. Will we hit it in the next few days? Justin Horn is standing by. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September 2nd. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed your day yesterday, but you found some shade because it got pretty hot. Uh, it was brutal out there. Start thinking ahead again in the coming days about your pets and making sure they have shelter and fresh water throughout the day. Justin Horn's with us now in for Mike Ostrage. Morning. Good morning, morning, guys. Hottest day of the year yesterday, 99 here in San Antonio. We obviously got close to that 100 degree mark. It should be noted, though, the heat index was 104, so it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Uh, with the humidity the way it is, we're going to see temperatures like that again today. Heat index will probably be right back where it was yesterday. 102, 104 here in San Antonio with numbers a little bit worse down to the south and east. Right now, we're at 80 degrees at the airport, 77, Holotus, 81, Canyon Lake, 76 in Bandera. So it's still steamy out there. Headlines today, heat index, as we mentioned, 100 plus. There still is the potential for a stray storm, small chance. Uh, we're going to talk about the Northeast coming up here in a bit. They had a ton of flash flooding overnight. Tornadoes also across parts of New Jersey. And then this weekend, less humidity. That's good, but the temperatures are going to be hot, uh, probably closing in on 100 yet again. Uh, that would be most likely on Sunday. Forecast for today. 10% chance of rain. That's all we're going to put in here in San Antonio. Now, if you're east of town, your rain chances are a little bit better. High temperatures, 98. Southeast Chile winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. There are some more rain chances down the line. We'll talk about that in. We'll have a look at the tropics coming up here in a bit. They're also heating up. Guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, we're learning about some administrative issues going on at South Sand Independent School District here in the San Antonio area. Just hours after receiving a notice, the TEA is appointing a special monitor to the district. Board of Trustees also voted to reprimand Superintendent Martin Mark Pugh for his conduct during a closed session meeting back on August 18th. In addition, the board held a heated discussion regarding allegations against trustees who have engaged in uh, bullying against other district employees and board members. In particular, Trustee Gilbert Rodriguez now banned from communicating directly with the TEA agents and legal counsel. Meanwhile, the letter from the Texas Education Agency says if the issues are not corrected while the monitor is in place at South Sand, the state agency may conduct additional investigations that could result in further sanctions. This morning, a four-year-old is in a San Antonio hospital after near drowning in her backyard pool last night. This happened on the city's northeast side on Prince Valiant Drive. That's near Raybon Drive and Mid Crown. An officer says a mother was inside her home cooking when she noticed her daughter had fallen into a pool. Police started CPR and found that the child had a pulse. She is now at the hospital, but an update to that child's condition has not been made available. New overnight, a divided U.S. Supreme Court is allowing a Texas law that bans most abortions to remain in force. For now, the court voted five to four late last night to deny an emergency appeal from abortion providers and others that sought to block enforcement of the law that went into effect yesterday. Majority of the high court said those bringing the case had not met the high burden required for a stay of the law, but the justices also suggested that their order likely isn't the last word on whether the law can stand because other challenges to it can still be brought. The new law prohibits abortions once medical professionals can detect cardiac activity, which is usually around six weeks. It is the strictest law against abortion in the United States since the High Court's landmark Roe v. Wade decision in 1973. Cases of coronavirus in our hospitals continue to decrease. 1,302 patients remain hospitalized and there are 18 new COVID related deaths. Seven day average right now for Bear County is now sitting at about 1,200 new cases of coronavirus in Bear County each day. Meanwhile, the CDC is asking people to reconsider their risk before traveling over the long Labor Day weekend. The White House is also moving forward on booster shots. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, the CDC issuing a travel warning for Labor Day, telling vaccinated people to consider their risk and telling unvaccinated people not to travel at all. 
First and foremost, if you are unvaccinated, um, we would recommend not traveling. COVID hospitalizations across the country have just hit a seven-month high. The Biden administration now moving forward on vaccine booster shots. FDA advisors will meet September 17th to consider Pfizer's booster shot application. Popular podcaster Joe Rogan has revealed he's positive for COVID. Throughout the night, I got fevers and sweats, and I knew what was going on. Months after he suggested young, healthy people don't need the vaccine. And now there's a new variant of the coronavirus. The World Health Organization is monitoring the Mu variant. More research is needed to determine if it's any more contagious. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And this morning, the remnants of Hurricane Ida are blowing through the northeast and mid-Atlantic, spawning at least two tornadoes. Heavy winds and drenching rains have destroyed several homes in New Jersey, left cars and roads underwater. The National Weather Service also confirmed a tornado that happened there last night. Other video shows water rushing through New York Liberty International Airport as the storm moved into New York. The National Weather Service recorded more than three inches of rain in New York Central Park in one hour. Today is National VJ Day, the observance of the Allied Forces victory over Japan in World War II. The six-year-long global war left as many as 80 million dead. The announcement of Japan's surrender came on August 15, 1945, effectively bringing the war to an end. But it was on September 2nd that Japan formally surrendered aboard the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. And that's when President Harry Truman declared the day national. It took several months after, place rather, several months after the surrender of Nazi Germany. And time now is 436 and it's about 80 degrees out there. You can now buy beer and wine two hours earlier on Sundays thanks to a new Texas law. Why those two hours are a big deal to some. Also next, another week of high school football kicks off tonight. We're going to get a preview of the Brandeis Broncos taking on the Warren Warriors. Outside with live cam. Settle in for the long haul here, folks. We are in September and it's uh, plenty hot out there. We'll see if there's any change to our forecast over the next seven days. Justin Horn will be back in just a bit. The Case at 12 Me TV Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week will feature Brandeis versus Warren tonight. This will be our second live broadcast of high school football in our San in San Antonio on our 12.2 over the air channel. Broncos are coming off a lopsided 33-7 win over neighborhood rival O'Connor last week to help kick off the 2021 season. Meanwhile, the Warren Warriors are coming off a 32-13 loss against fifth-ranked Smithson Valley before facing Brandeis this week in a non-district game after the Broncos were moved to District 28-6A. What's important about facing them is that we just execute what we want to do and that they're a pretty good team. Their running back is pretty good. We have to shut him down. Just keeping these kids positive, you know, through these first three games and understanding what it means, I think is the most important thing. And, and uh, you know, our coaches have done a great job of staying positive with our kids and we're going to continue. Uh, we got a great team and, you know, I look forward to continuing to watch him grow. Kickoff between Brandeis and Ward is slated for 7 p.m. at Gustafson Stadium. You can see it live on KSAT's MeTV, thanks to Texas Sports Productions. Don't forget to join us uh, for big game coverage on our app this week for live broadcasts of other high school football games in and around the San Antonio area, courtesy of Texas Sports Productions. This week it will include Judson versus Lake Travis live from Austin. Fighting Texas Aggies have added four more years on Jimbo Fisher's already whopping 10-year, $75 million contract. And now be coach of the Aggies through 2031. Also includes a raise. Starting in January of 22, his salary will increase from $7.5 million to $9 million. In 2023, he'll get even more money. It's after leading the Aggies to their best finish in school history last year at fourth overall in the nation since winning only their only national title in 1939. Sixth-ranked Aggies will kick off their 2021 season on Saturday against Kent State at Kyle Field. San Antonio Missions finally get a win times two against those silly sod poodles from Amarillo. The first game last night, thanks to a home run and some great pitching, Missions won by a final score of 2 nothing. In the second game, which was a makeup, Missions came from behind to walk off the sod poodles 5-4. Team managed to get a walk-off single in the bottom of the seventh inning. Series continues tonight at 7-5. Also, Missions are hosting a Labor Day flash sale this Sunday. The sale will consist of half-price tickets and half-price parking for Sunday's game. For more information, go to samissions.com.
Well, good. They beat the sod poodles. Twice. Twice. <laughs> Time now, 442 and about 80 degrees. And two extra hours may not seem like much, but still ahead, we are hearing from Texans on a new law that allows you to buy beer and wine earlier on Sunday. Hi, welcome back. It is 445. Fake vaccination cards are a growing concern as more places are requiring people to be vaccinated. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, cracking down on fake vaccination cards. More than a dozen frontline workers in New York charged in an alleged COVID vaccination card scheme accused of forging COVID-19 vaccine cards. The Manhattan District Attorney saying some of the suspects charged with buying those cards work in hospital and nursing home settings. It's completely unacceptable and it obviously undermines public safety and undermines confidence in public safety. The alleged mastermind, 31-year-old Jasmine Clifford of New Jersey, who authorities say sold at least 250 forged COVID vaccination cards through her now defunct Instagram accounts under the alias Anti-Vax Mama for up to $200 per card. So how did authorities know her card was fake? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Back here in Texas, you don't need to wait until 12 to get a 12 pack on Sundays anymore. A new state law now in effect pushes the starting time for beer and wine sales on Sunday to 10 a.m. Garrett Berringer talked to Texans to get their reactions. The new Sunday hours for beer and wine sales aren't likely to have a shortage of people toasting them. I think it's great. I love alcohol. The head of the Association of Convenience Store Retailers says he'd occasionally have customers come in too early for the noon start for Sunday sales. Sometimes they come 30 minutes, one hour, but they have to wait because of the restrictions, we cannot sell it. Now the window is widening. Starting this week, retailers like convenience and grocery stores are able to start selling beer and wine at 10 not 12 on Sundays. Two hours may not seem like much, but Tahir says that can have a decent effect on convenience stores bottom line. Because people who come to buy beer may buy other stuff too. An average uh, convenience store uh, business on the alcoholic is 35 to 40%. So we are expecting it might go up 5% more. And for customers, it means not having to choose between stocking the fridge and being able to see the noon kickoff. Some wine early Sunday, get ready for the football games. Or having to plan too much ahead of time for a Sunday float down the river. When I was younger and I spent all my Sundays at the Wadalupe River and left real early and, you know, did all the tubing and stuff. It made it a little difficult. And even those who said the new hours wouldn't make much difference to them are supportive. You can get it overnight and keep it for next day. So. All right. But it's a good idea. I think it's fine. They're catching up with the 21st century. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We were just talking to Justin Horn about this. We can bring him in real quick. Uh, we've all accidentally done it, gone to like H-E-B on a Sunday and mm -hmm. maybe at like quarter to noon, <laughs> grabbed a bottle of wine or maybe a, a six pack for the weekend. And they're like, oops, sorry. Oops. Yep. Yeah. Wait a few minutes. Times yeah. are changing. So it's, yeah, it's always a little kind of embarrassing, but yeah, times are changing now. Well, it's 10 o'clock now, right? So yes. that works. Hey, let's talk some more stats here. Uh, last time we hit 100 degrees, 365 days ago, September 1st, 2020, when we last hit 100 at San Antonio International. Yesterday it was 99, so we got awful close. And I think we're gonna get close this weekend. Uh, there's a look at the highs across the state yesterday. It did get up to 103 in Del Rio and Laredo. Rest of the state was in the upper 90s. Now, the trade-off there, the heat index was well above 100, so you know, it's uh, it's still hot no matter how you look at it, but that is an interesting stat. Here's the setup. High pressures in control. Uh, we have heat advisories across parts of East Texas and down around the Corpus area. And then out west on the edge of this eye, you've got some flash flood watches and some pretty good rain stretching from El Paso up into parts of New Mexico. As uh, we zoom out, you see this is really kind of taking control of our weather. Meantime, in the northeast, there was a lot of heavy rain overnight. That has since moved off to the north and east. But look at some of these rainfall totals. It was a flash flood emergency in New York City where the subways became flooded. They picked up eight inches in the last 24 hours. Places like Boston, three inches, Philadelphia, Baltimore, you name it. A lot of heavy rain up and down the east coast. Thankfully, that is moving out. Things are improving there. Outside for us, 80 degrees, mostly cloudy. Feels like 85 with a southerly wind at 9 miles per hour. Dew point is at 76, so 
Uh, if you're heading out for the morning run, still going to be hot, still going to be humid. 77 in Holotus, 77 in Divine, 79 right now in Pleasanton, 86 in Del Rio. Are you kidding me? That's not a cool down at all. Uh, they're going to be right back near the triple digits again today. And dew points are going to be in the 70s most of today. Right now they're in the mid 70s, so extremely muggy out there. Forecast high here in San Antonio, 98. Uh, the forecast heat index is 101. I think we could go a little bit higher than that, maybe 102, 103, even 104 possible. Heat index is going to be above 100. Most spots minus the hill country, so it's going to be another hot one. A uh, little lower humidity over the weekend, so there's that uh, to look forward to. Dew points, I think, fall into the low 60s, if not even a, a few 50s out there on Sunday, so that will feel a little bit better. Here's the forecast for today. Isolated showers and storms possible in the afternoon. We've seen that last couple days. I think probably east of I-35 is where your best chance will be this afternoon. And then tomorrow, same story. One or two stray storms popping up on your Friday. After tomorrow, rain chances go away. And the uh, weekend, as we mentioned, uh, we'll see some lower humidity. So 10% chance today. We'll go 20% chance tomorrow. 98 today, 96 tomorrow, 98 on Saturday, 99 on Sunday. We'll get close to that triple digit mark. And then some rain chances return late on Labor Day. 98, 20% chance of rain. And I think we'll see a few chances by the middle part of next week. So we're trying to get through the first part of September here without hitting that 100-degree uh, mark. We'll see. Well, did you, hopefully. Did you notice our new monitor over here? Yes, yeah. I did. Nice big one. <laughs> it's yeah. very uh, it's, shiny, bright, and new. It's, it's, it's just in size appropriate. <laughs> this is where I'm watching football now. <laughs> nice. Ah. Right here. Cool. We'll pull up a few chairs, spread them out about six feet, right? <laughs> exactly. Bring snacks. Yeah. yeah. That sounds good. Thank you, Justin. Right now, 451, about 80 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to hear from the stars of the latest Marvel movie, Shang-Chi, and the legend of the Ten Rings. Check out your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, five, eight, four, fireball two. Daily four numbers, one, eight, six, four, fireball four. Cash five, one, 12, 13, 15, 26. And a lot of Texas, 15, 32, 38, 41, 48, 51. And your Powerball numbers, 10, 20, 29, 48, 51, Powerball 17, Power Play two. Good luck. Just about five till the newest Marvel movie is debuting in theaters, plus a new take on Cinderella. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The wait just about over for the new Marvel movie Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Munger Zhang co-stars as the fierce warrior Xia Ling, and she tells me it's more than just an action movie. It's a film about family. It's a film about bond and love. <laughs> But of course, there's also great fight scenes, which was all new to Zhang, who was nervous and accidentally punched star Simu Liu in the face during their first fight. I didn't mean to. It, it was an accident, but I did enjoy it. <laughs> Zhang Chi is only in theaters starting tonight. Hi. Would you like to dance? Streaming tomorrow is the new Cinderella with a modern twist. It Billy Porter really plays the fairy godmother role, yeah, who is now known as Fab G, like and he tells me it's amazing because Go as a kid, he never saw himself in fairy tales. As a black queer man on this planet, there, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s, there wasn't anything to really identify with. You can watch him take on the role tomorrow on Amazon Prime Video. Another delay for the Top Gun sequel, we won't see Top Gun Maverick this year. Paramount moving it from Thanksgiving to next May, as the box office remains weak because of the pandemic. And actress Salma Hayek with a birthday today, the upcoming Marvel's The Eternals star is 55, while Bill and Ted actor Keanu Reeves is 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 456 and about 80 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we get the latest on the remnants of Ida soaking the Northeast with heavy rain and spawning several tornadoes. Plus, some new features could be coming soon to your Apple Watch. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. Steven is in the studio. He'll have an update on the situation uh, with TransGuide and his uh, uh, take on how things are going so far. As we get our morning commute started, I'll spit it out. We'll be right back. at 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. 
making headlines this morning. An elderly man hit by a car while trying to cross the street overnight. We have details coming up. Plus, what remains of Ida is still causing big problems, this time in the Northeast. Outside with live cam, it figures Mother Nature would wait till September to give us the hottest day of the year so far. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday the 2nd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, we got up to 99 yesterday, which is very hot, but still not officially triple digits. Right. Justin's in for Mike this morning, and I think at this point, Justin, you'll agree, hitting 100 is more kind of a mental benchmark now for us, isn't it? 100%. I mean, it's an arbitrary number, right? But it's, it's a mental thing. We don't want to do it. We want to have a summer with no triple digits. Uh, we'll see if we get there. It's, it's going to be tough because I think this weekend we're going to get awful close. One thing's for sure, if you're riding the bus this afternoon, roll down all the windows because it is going to be toasty. 78 degrees this morning, mostly cloudy. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour this afternoon, though, 97. There could be a stray shower. Not anticipating a lot on the radar, though. And that heat index will be up over 100 degrees. Let's look at the numbers right now. We're at 80 degrees at the airport, 78 Port SA, 73 Bernie Stage, 74 up there in Kerrville. So slightly more comfortable as you get into the hill country. Forecast today, just a 10% chance rain here in town. A little better chance if you're east of I-35. Temperatures will make it up to about 98 officially for high. Again, yesterday was 99. Uh, the heat index anywhere from 102 to 104 here in town. Making plans for Labor Day weekend? Here you go, 99 Sunday. We will see some lower humidity, so there's that. Mostly sunny skies both Saturday and Sunday. I think we do see a few more clouds late on Monday. Maybe a couple of isolated showers or storms. But all in all, it looks pretty good for any plans you have. Just stay cool. It's going to be toasty. Okay, let's check in on the roads this morning. Steven is here. Steven, what are you seeing right now? Hey, good morning, Justin. Not seeing really a whole lot on the roads at Trans. Yeah, just a few cars here and there. Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Uh, shows one vehicle getting their morning started early with us. As you can see right here at 281 at Hildebrandt, we're off to a nice, smooth start on the roadways. They're wide open, so we shouldn't expect any issues that's gonna be an in, that are going to be an inconvenience if you plan on heading out in the next few moments. Uh, taking a look, though, we do have a stall of the vehicle out there of US 90 westbound at General McMullen. Not causing any delays with traffic right now, but be sure to check those vehicles and move over and slow down when you see those flies lights, but we do want to jump up here to I 10 where we are seeing a some, little bit of a slowdown in those westbound lanes. You can see here we talked about this yesterday. There is some road work that's been going on since yesterday evening up into five in the morning. Uh, it's going to should be wrapping up later this morning, hopefully, but it is leading to a full closure of those westbound main lanes from I 10 F to FM 1516, and this is out toward Wycold Road. It, they are retaining the wall work out there. So again, this should be wrapping up later this morning, but seeing a little bit of a slowdown right now. But overall, the map is looking pretty green right now. And those inbound times looking the same as you can see coming in from Bernie on I-10, 25 minutes, 26 minutes from 281 and Bulverde, and 25 coming in from New Braunfels on 35. And really quick, if you are coming in from Seguin on those westbound lanes, it's still pretty green with 30 minutes. Uh, one last look at Transguide Loop 1604. Pretty lonesome out there, but I think that's what people like to see as they're getting their days started. Mark Stephanie. Thanks, Stephen. New this morning, police say an 80 year old man was hit by a car while crossing a street on the northwest side last night. Happened in the 7100 block of Wurzbach near Babcock around 8.30 p.m. SAPD says the driver that hit the man stopped and tried to help. The man was taken to a nearby hospital. Police say his condition is unknown at this time. No charges have been filed. And this was a scene early this morning as the San Antonio Humane Society received an estimated 100 pets who were evacuated from Louisiana following the impact of Hurricane Ida. The group includes about 50 cats and around 40 to 50 dogs. The Humane Society coordinated the transport with a rescue in Houston who picked up the pets from Louisiana and drove them directly to the shelter. Local veterinarians are now examining the group of pets to make sure they are ready for adoption. The shelter is in need of supplies and donations for the hurricane pets. Supplies needed include things like pet food, rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, puppy pads, cat litter, and more. Donations can be dropped off at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. That's from noon until 7 today. Meanwhile, the remnants of Ida delivering a historic soaking to a large part of the northeast U.S., forcing a state of emergency declaration in some areas. In New Jersey, at least one person has died in the flooding. Here's ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi with more. Overnight, dramatic images of the historic flash flood emergency in the Northeast. Wow. What's left of Hurricane Ida pummeling New Jersey, where at one point Wednesday night, five inches of rain fell per hour. 
and Newark Airport flooded. <laughs> the airport suspending all flights last night. And for the first time ever, the National Weather Service issuing a flash flood emergency for New York City. Water seen rushing into the subway station. Subway service halted overnight. And in the Bronx, more than two dozen cars bobbing like bath toys on this highway. This man climbing out of his window to safety. I was driving down and then I was taking my time when I see the car start floating, you know. The car just start floating and shut off. And then I look crazy, you know. This new video showing the damage in a southern New Jersey neighborhood. The family living in this home racing to the basement when the twister approached. But if you look just next door, that house is what actually bore the brunt of um, the tornado from this neighborhood. And outside Washington, D.C., a 19-year-old man died after his basement apartment flooded. Residents of the apartment complex saying the rush of water came out of nowhere. Like the whole living room was floated. It was literally rushing to our rooms. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And here at home, people are praying for a park police officer who's battling COVID-19. Neighbors and friends showed up yesterday in support of park police officer Jay Pena. They say he was not vaccinated and contracted the virus before ending up in a coma. His wife, who is also not vaccinated, did catch the virus, but she is doing better. Pena's family and friends are now hoping he will be able to pull through. Happening today, San Antonio Police Department is holding an asset seizure auction. It includes like things like tools and designer sneakers and Spurs collectors memorabilia. The auction will be held 630 tonight. The VFW at 650 East White. That's near Roosevelt Avenue down on the south side. Bidders can start looking at items at 530 this evening. Items can be purchased via Carter Cash. For more information and a full list of those items up for auction, go to ksat.com. And time now is 5.06 and it's about 80 degrees. So ahead, Twitter is testing a new anti-abuse feature called Safety Mode. We'll tell you how it works. Also next, one of the many new Texas laws has to do with street racing, how it's giving police more power to deal with offenders. Did it feel hotter yesterday? Yeah, but the, you factor in the humidity. It was brutal out there. We'll see if Justin is talking about a continuation of that trend here in the Alamo City area coming up a little later in the newscast. Out of the many new Texas laws now in effect, two of them are meant to crack down a street racing seen in San Antonio and other areas across our state. So donuts, packed parking lots and related mischief have led to injuries, including one incident where a man's hands were blown off by fireworks. San Antonio police say street racing is what led to a crash that sent six people to the hospital on I-35 near AT&T Center Parkway back in July. The new laws make it so law enforcement can confiscate vehicles used in races. If a suspect is a repeat offender, intoxicated or causes injury or death to someone, the punishment has also increased from a class B to a class A misdemeanor and in some cases state jail felony. You can actually hear the accidents as they happen. You know, a lot of people think of when they hear a wreck that's like this real sharp thing that's really a dull thud and we hear that so often. These new rules don't just take aim at those racing, those driving recklessly like doing donuts and those even going to watch the races will also be fined. And time now is 511. It's about 80 degrees. Still ahead, your Apple Watch could get a lot, uh, quite a few more features lately. We'll tell you about the latest apps. Plus, Facebook is launching a new fantasy sports like prediction game that you can share with your friends. The Olympics and Paralympics are back. And watching our athletes will once again give the impression that America is the healthiest country in the world. We aren't. But we can be. Our collective health is too important to take for granted ever again. The health of our nation cannot just be measured by the victories of our champions. It must be measured by the health of all of us. What is that? It's Bob and Beck. Give me some. No. You get Toby back. It's adorable. Just like you. I'll be back. Go for the handful. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Woo! 
Insure with 27 vitamins and minerals. Now introducing Insure Complete with 30 grams of protein. Welcome back to GMSA at 515. Twitter is testing a new anti-abuse feature called Safety Mode. ABC's Moto Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a new feature on Twitter to block abusers. Twitter is testing Safety Mode that will temporarily auto-block accounts that send harmful or abusive tweets to you. Those blocks would last for seven days, but users can undo auto-blocks made in error. Next, some expected upgrades for the Apple Watch. The company is planning health-related features, including a tool to detect rising blood pressure and a thermometer to help with fertility planning. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Some features could be available next year. Finally, Facebook Fantasy Games. They are new games that let users predict what's going to happen in everything from sports to television shows and pop culture. There will be public leaderboards, but users can also create their own leagues among friends. So like fantasy football, but for psychics. I guess they already knew that was coming, right? That's so Raven. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 516. I was looking at a couple of the trans guide cameras outside and some of them there are actually no vehicles on the roadways but I know that's not true for every camera. Yeah yeah there's there's hundreds of cameras out there and just from a few of these shots it does show pretty good commute so far Mark and stuff as you can see right now roads are looking pretty empty uh, loop 1604 Petranco uh, again very lonesome out there but loop 410 at Jackson looks like there's a few folks out there getting their morning started early but thankfully no big issues that are causing delays that we've spotted just yet but we do want to bring your attention to this crash reported here off I-10 eastbound near Mid Horizon drive. Uh, not seeing that on the tech stop website just yet. Our system picked this up and we checked the trans guide cameras, uh, not spotting anything out there right now. But as you just mentioned, there's hundreds of cameras, so we'll see if we can maybe get a shot at that. Uh, we are we are working to find out what exactly is going on out there. Uh, still seeing a slowdown though here off I 10 westbound where we do have that road work that's been going on uh, at FM 1516. You can see traffic is still moving right now, but not very fast at eight miles per hour. So just prepare for that slowdown if you're traveling into the San Antonio area from Seguin, but overall the issues aren't really big right now. We still got a lot of green on the screen, which is of course what we like to see as we're getting a new day started. And one last look at Transguide I-35 southbound at Maine, getting a little bit busier on some of these shots, but overall the morning's shaping up to be quite nice, but we're keeping our fingers crossed, of course, that it always stays that way, guys. And holding, uh, having our fingers crossed for our first good cold front of the season. <laughs> yes. And Justin has uh, an animation with some historical perspective. Yeah, show of hands, who's ready for a front? Oh, we are. Yeah, was, it was so ready for a rhetorical <laughs> question. We, oh. are, we all are, but uh, here's some of the uh, history here. Last few years for cold fronts. 2019, it was October 11th. 2018, September 22nd. September 26th, back in 2017, 2016, and last year, September 4th. Okay, so we're measuring this by a 10 degree drop. So kind of our first real front that we feel. It's, it's an arbitrary thing, kind of, but we're thinking late September, that's the average for our first quote unquote front around here. We'll see if it pans out that way this year. So far, there are no fronts in the forecast as we've made our way into September. We'll let you know if we see any in the upcoming forecast. High pressure is the big story right now. Underneath that dome of high pressure sinking air, hot weather. Heat advisories posted for parts of northeast Texas and down towards Corpus. On the edge of that high pressure, heavy rain across parts of far west Texas and New Mexico. Flash flood watches posted there. We're not going to see any of this rain. Stays off to our west. We're mostly just looking at hot weather today as this dome of high pressure settles in across the middle part of the country. Of course, by now you've heard that the northeast got a ton of rain last night. They had some severe weather. Uh, rainfall totals up around eight inches in New York City. It was a flash flood emergency overnight. Thankfully, the rain has moved out. But take a look at some of the storm reports. Five tornadoes reported yesterday across parts of Maryland and New Jersey. There was some damage reported there, so it was a very busy day yesterday across the Northeast. For us, not so much, just the heat. 80 right now, 82 Stinson, 78 at Kelly, 79 Randolph. I don't suspect that we'll cool off all that much more. Maybe, maybe 78, 79. That's all we can hope for at this point with all this humidity in place. 77 Hondo, 76 in Divine, 79 right now. Pleasanton, you're at 79 in Creso Springs. And the Del Rio number still shocking. It's 85, 5 o'clock in the morning, still 85 degrees out there in Del Rio. Dew points are high everywhere, mid 70s. These numbers ease down a little bit today, but the heat index is going to be up around 104. This may be the worst of it. Um, heat index values drop off a little bit, but look, we're still talking about 100s here. So 
Uh, the heat doesn't really let up all that much. Humidity comes down some this weekend, and that helps. Forecast calls for an isolated shower or storm today. I think generally east of I-35. This shows a couple of pop-ups. Tomorrow, same story. Isolated shower or storm during the afternoon hours. This is around 5 o'clock tomorrow, and it does show a little bit of action. Forecast for the rest of today will top out close to 98 degrees. Just a 10% chance rain here in San Antonio today. A slightly better chance as you go east and southeast of town. Well, let's check in on the tropics real quick, too. We have some action out in the Atlantic, and that would be Larry. Tropical storm Larry, but it's going to become a hurricane, we think, today. Actually, I think it did just become a hurricane. This is a new update here, but Hurricane Larry now, and this is moving towards the middle part of the Atlantic, will become a very strong hurricane, but likely won't affect land. Uh, that's some good news there. And then we have another little area here. Hurricane Center is watching. Uh, this is hugging the Central American coast, about a 20% chance of development. Right now, it's crossing over land. Doesn't look all that great. We'll watch it. 20% chance of rain tomorrow, 98 Saturday, 99 Sunday, lower humidity and some small rain chances coming back into play Monday afternoon and then again Tuesday and Wednesday. Justin, are you surprised at all that Ida's remnants remain fairly potent heading up into the Northeast? We've seen that before, obviously with Harvey that dropped a lot of rain in Houston. It's not to that extent, but yes, these tropical systems, they carry so much moisture with them and when they sort of get absorbed into the uh, the jet stream, you start to see some pretty heavy rain on the backside of them, and that's what we're looking at in the Northeast. Did it make a long enough run that it actually strong, started drawing moisture from the Atlantic too? Probably so. Okay. I mean, yeah, and the rain and the severe weather was just really heavy. Thankfully, it is all moving out. Well, that's good news. Yeah. All right. Very good news. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Justin. Right now, 521, about 79 degrees. All right, coming up next in your morning spotlight, Top Gun and the latest Mission Impossible get delayed again, plus a first look at Elton John's The Lockdown Sessions. Seriously? They're they're bumping Top Gun again? <laughs> really? <laughs> they're just messing with you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, lottery numbers, pick three, 584, Fireball 2, your daily four numbers, 1864, Fireball 4. Cash 5, we have 1, 12, 13, 15, 26. Lotto, Texas, 15, 32, 38, 41, 48, 51. And your Powerball numbers, 10, 20, 29, 48, 51, Powerball 17, Power Play 2. Good luck. Well, if you are ready for the return of Maverick and Top Gun 2, surprise, the studio is moving it again. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. I'm just trying to make the best movie I can. That's Paramount has pushed back two Tom Cruise movies as studio concerns continue over the coronavirus Delta variant. Top Gun Maverick moves from November 19th to May 27th, 2022. That Memorial Day weekend slot was when Mission Impossible 7 was due out. Instead, it'll debut September 30th, 2022. Some things better. It turns out Elton John's duet with Dua Lipa, Cold Heart Panau Remix, wasn't his only pandemic project. The song is part of The Lockdown Sessions, a set of 16 collaborations between John and such artists as Miley Cyrus, Lil Nas X, Brandi Carlile, Stevie Nicks, Eddie Vedder, and Stevie Wonder. The album is due out October 22nd. Put that bottle on your head. Babe, he's not serious. We've been drinking. <laughs> Vacation Friends is getting a sequel. Reports say the R-rated comedy, which debuted last weekend on Hulu, had the biggest opening weekend audience of any original film in the streaming service's history. Reportedly, the sequel will be titled Honeymoon Friends. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I love John Cena in comedy. Yeah, this one looks pretty funny. Yeah. Time now, 526 and about 79 degrees right now. So ahead on GMSA, we were just talking about this with Justin. We'll have the very latest on Ida as the storm uh, inundates the northeast with flash flooding and tornadoes. And Ida is also affecting prices at the pump. We're going to tell you how much it's expected to go up. Need a new pet? San Antonio Humane Society has a furry friend standing by waiting for you. Parts of the Northeast U.S. have been dealing with what's left of Ida, including heavy rain, lots of flooding, and even tornadoes. 
Some four-legged victims of Hurricane Ida have found shelter here in San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The Humane Society says some of them could be looking to make this city their forever home. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 79 degrees, but yesterday we hit 99, which was the hottest day we've had so far. Yay. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Thursday. It is September 2nd. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us. And yeah, you're going to have to stay cool another day. We have to check in with Justin to tell us how hot it will be outside again. Ju Justin, I'm being tongue in cheek. Of course, this is a uh, dangerous yeah. heat and we've it got is. football tonight. Yeah, we do. We do have football and uh, it, it's going to be hot. That's that's the bottom line. If you're going to these games, make sure you hydrate. Hopefully you're uh, sitting on the side of the stadium where it's shaded. 94 at kickoff, 90 at halftime. Sunset's going to be around 754. There is an outside chance for straight storm, but I, I think the chances are, are really pretty low. We should get off most of these football games without any issues. Temperatures right now, 80 at Canyon Lake, 79 New Braunfels, 76 in Seguin, 78 right now Gonzales, 76 in Divine. It's a warm, muggy morning. Here are some of the headlines. Heat index is going to be 100 plus today, if not up around 100, 304. Stray storm, as we mentioned. And then uh, we've been talking, oh, we went backwards for whatever reason. You saw the football go through the, the upright again. That's a good thing. Score more points. Uh, northeast, uh, flash flooding, tornadoes. We talked about that earlier. Big problem up there. We're going to get you updated on what's going on there. And then this weekend, less humidity, but still hot. I think the temperature is going to get up close to that triple digit mark on Sunday, especially. Today, just a 10% chance of rain. We're topping out at 98. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Steven last half hour was talking about a few issues there on the roadways. Let's get the latest with Steve. Yeah, it looks pretty quiet here. Justin I 10 at Callahan. Just a few people out there right now. Nothing too big to talk about with these shots at trans guy. That's going to cause any issues for that morning commute if you're heading out in the next few moments. But yeah, we have seen a few problems out there. Uh, this crash still seen popping up in our system there off I 10 eastbound near mid horizon drive. Uh, not seen any issues. There's not any delays coming into those eastbound lanes of I 10, but always use caution out there. Uh, we are checking the trans guide shots and again trying to see if we can find out what exactly is happening out there. But for now, just use some caution driving through there. A stalled vehicle reported here off 281 northbound right at loop 1604. Been seeing these stalls coming and going, so check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. And as we take a look around, their issues aren't really big right now, and they're not going to be causing any delays. We did have some slowdowns there on I-10 right at FM 1516 so due to some road work, but it looks like the traffic is now moving nice and smooth through that area. So good news if you're traveling in from Seguin on I-10 to the downtown San Antonio area and these inbound times also looking really good right now coming in from La Verne on 87. It's 22 minutes, 28 minutes coming in from 37 in Floresville and 27 minutes coming in from Pleasanton on 37. So pleasant drive there as we jump back to trans guy taking a look at the shots here. It is getting a little bit more busier from I-35 at St. Mary's not too far from us here, but of course use caution when you hit the roadways and now that it's a new month, more construction to be on the lookout for while we'll the full details coming up guys. Thank, Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio's Humane Society is helping out some four-legged victims of Hurricane Ida. The animal shelter welcomed more than 100 dogs and cats to its facility overnight. Katrina Reber is there live in the 4800 block of Ferrisburg Road with what that with that story. Now, Katrina, where did all these pets come from? Well, they're all from Louisiana. Some of them were surrendered by the owners who weren't able to care for them during this storm. Others already were in Humane Society shelters down there, and they are in need of homes, clearly. Now, all of those animals arrived very early this morning after a long drive, um, all of them needing a place to stay. There are 86 cats and 50 dogs in all. The Humane Society here is helping out by taking them in, allowing shelters in southern Louisiana to open up more space so they can take in more animals. The hope is the pets that arrived this morning will be here for only a few days. After they're assessed by our medical team and they've been reviewed, we'll be able to get them on adopt, up for adoption early next week. Well, this is actually the second arrival of animals from Louisiana, but by far the largest group. They took in 17 animals last Saturday. With all the extra mouths to feed, the Humane Society here is in need of some extra supplies. You can find out more about adopting the pets as well as find a list of the items that the Humane Society here needs on their website. And that address is sahumane.org or sahumane.org. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Meanwhile, the Northeast U.S. Uh, getting hammered by what was left of Ida, which hit the U.S. as a Category 4 hurricane in Louisiana on Sunday. Since then, it's pummeled its way across the southeast and up the coast. CNN's Brett Conway has a look at what happened overnight and what's to come. The remnants of Ida slamming the Northeast. Uh, Mother Nature will do whatever she wants, and she is uh, really angry tonight. The streets of New York City look like rivers in Harlem, in Queens. I'm very, very worried about what's happening out on the roads. Below ground, too, the subways are inundated. So are a number of homes. This was the first flash flood emergency ever issued by the National Weather Service for New York City. In New Jersey, I've never witnessed something like this before in my life. This is in Mullica Hill. You can see debris twisting up in a tornado. Multiple homes were damaged, some destroyed. It's like a a war zone. There's the, the one house over there. There's nothing left of it. In Newark, after the all time wettest day on record, cars are underwater. In this family's basement in Maplewood, furniture is stacked up as toys float by. In Passaic, water rescue teams had to be called out. We have too many areas where the flooding has gotten so bad the cars are stuck and we have bodies underwater. We are now we are now retrieving bodies. This is in Connecticut. Look at this highway. Bridgeport police warned people to stay off the roads, reporting a dozen cars underwater. Ida inundating the Northeast, and she's not done yet. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff says it's possible the U.S. will coordinate with the Taliban on future counterterrorism strikes in Afghanistan against ISIS militants or others. Army General Mark Milley says the Taliban is a ruthless group and whether or not they change remains to be seen in his words. He made the comments just days after the final U.S. troop withdrawal in Afghanistan. Milley and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin say it's hard to predict the future of the Taliban in Afghanistan. A federal bankruptcy judge has approved a settlement deal to dissolve Purdue Pharma, the maker of the addictive painkiller OxyContin. It will be reorganized and will continue to manufacture op opioids while also making overdose reversal medications. Purdue Pharma's former owners, a billionaire Sackler family, will pay out more than $4 billion to address the opioid epidemic. Opioids have killed half a billion Americans to date. The settlement resolves all civil litigation against the Sackler family, Purdue Pharma, and others, and awards them broad legal protection against future civil litigation. Several states are expected to appeal that ruling. Back here at home, 537 on your Thursday morning, about 79 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to get an update on how Ida will affect your price at the pump in the coming days and weeks. And next, if you need a job, a couple of major companies are getting ready to hire thousands of workers. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at 79 degrees, which isn't so bad considering we hit 99 yesterday. We're going to be checking in with Justin with what we can expect today. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 540. In your morning consumer headlines, Amazon is planning to hire 55,000 global employees in the coming months. This is the company's first hiring push since Andy Jassy took over as CEO in July. Amazon says it is adding 40,000 corporate and technology roles in the U.S. There are also tens of thousands of jobs for hourly positions in operations. The remaining jobs are in other countries, including Canada, France, and the U.K. Amazon is planning to get more candidates in its annual career day on September 15th. Amtrak wants to spend its share of funding of that trillion dollar infrastructure bill on more than 50 new routes. It will uh, look like it looks like rather the bill will allocate 66 billion dollars to passenger and freight rail. However, the new routes are a good bit slower than traveling by car between cities, possibly more than 40 percent at certain times of day. Some trips uh, can be longer by an hour compared to traveling by car. Routes between major cities will average speeds of less than 50 miles per hour. By comparison, new trains in Europe and Asia have approached 200 miles an hour since the 1960s. Amtrak didn't say why it's not proposing faster trips on its newer routes. Delta Airlines now looking to hire 1,500 new flight attendants. The company says applicants must have graduated high school or have their GED and be at least 21 years old. They also must be fully vaccinated before they start training. And all the company plans to have 3,000 new flight attendants in the air by next summer.
542 about 79 degrees and coming up next we are showing off a cute pet that needs a new home over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Well, it's time to have that kind of puppy baby talk going on. Kim's here from the <laughs> San Antonio so Humane cute. Society. I, you can't yes. help but just go, look at Jabuja. Who is that little one? This is Ruby. So Ruby is a little bit of a hound mix. Uh, she is seven pounds and almost two months, two months old. Oh, so cute. that adorable little adorable. face, little Definitely. short hair, easy to take care yes. of, but a little bit of hound. I mean, they're, yep. they're smart dogs. They so take a lot of, a lot of enrichment mm -hmm. yes. and yes. a lot of time. Yes. So yes, puppies, lots of puppies, lots there, of puppies. So, so have lots of chew toys. Oh, quit looking at me with those <laughs> eyes. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Yes. Look at that. Look She's at the, like, okay. Just take me home. Just take me Look home. at, they just melt you looking at that and that little shake yeah. there. And you're going to be taking in a lot of animals yes. from Hurricane Ida. From Hurricane yes. Ida coming yes, up coming here up. this week. Exactly. So, so we need donations. We need rubbing alcohol. We need blankets. We need pet beds. We need Ziploc bags. I mean, everything. So they'll be coming in at the end of the week. And then we're also running a special. So all of our animals, excluding ambassador pets, are 50% off. Adoption's 50% off. So. Mm -hmm come to the shelter and adopt. Okay, now, if you'd like more information about that, you can go to their website or just head on over right there north of uh, 410 on yes. Fredericksburg Road. Yeah. Thank come you, dear. see little Ruby. 546 gas prices ahead of the Labor Day weekend are already higher than normal. And now Hurricane Ida's direct hit on our nation's soil and gas industry could send the price at the pump even higher. CNN's Mandy Gaither has a closer look at when experts say you can catch a break. Hurricane Ida threatening to spike gas prices nationwide as millions of people are expected to hit the road for the Labor Day weekend. We always see gas prices increase, but this year we're going to see them go up just a little bit more, and that's because of the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. She took off about 13% of our refining capacities. AAA says many of the major refineries in the region are shut down or running at reduced rates, and major pipelines carrying gas, diesel, and jet fuel from the Gulf Coast to other states were also shut as a precaution ahead of Ida. With a Category 4 storm that typically takes three-plus weeks for refineries to get started again and get back to normal operations. Uh, right now, we don't have a timeline from those refineries uh, when they'll be operating again. Gas prices have already shot up nearly 80 percent from their low point in April 2020, but demand remains high as more people hit the road and gas prices will likely keep climbing. According to AAA on Wednesday, the price of a gallon of regular gas stood at $3.17. Headed into Labor Day weekend, we do expect this to be the most expensive prices we've seen for the holiday since 2014. And while AAA says prolonged power outages could keep refineries and pipelines offline, potentially raising gas prices, once refineries go back online, AAA expects prices to come down as demand drops after Labor Day. People are traveling less, schools back in session. Uh, so there should be some relief coming to the pump. It's a mid to late September. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, this is a perfect segue to traffic this morning. Uh, that's right, but things are looking a little rough there in I-10 and Probant. Yeah, things didn't stay good for long. Uh, we do have a crash reported here right there on I-10 and Probant. You can see we do have some flashing lights, emergency responders out there, and some road flares indicating it uh, looks like a shoulder lane is closed off right now. It's still pretty dark out there. It doesn't look like there's a lot of lighting from this shot at Transguide. Traffic is moving through that area. Just move over and slow down for those first responders and tech stock crews working to assist that driver out there. Clear the scene, that is. Let's jump to the map right now. This is reported in those eastbound lanes of I-10. I-10 right at Probant, still early enough to where we're not seeing delays with traffic, thankfully, so not going to be causing any issues for now, but we're going to be watching that pretty closely. Still seeing the stalls popping up, though. This one here off US 90 westbound at Couples Road. Again, we've been seeing those stalls popping up, clearing out, so check those vehicles before you hit your road, the hit the roadways, that is. Uh, let's go ahead and bring your attention all the way up here, though, to Kendall County and something you want to mark your calendars for, some uh, lane closures that we can expect later this month. That's a road construction that's happening out there at 
I-10. This is the second phase of this road construction that's going to lead to the closure of the eastbound uh, frontage road lanes right at the State Highway 46 intersection and a closure of the Upper Balconis Road at the eastbound frontage road intersection. Now, this is part of that second phase of the I, uh, construction going out there at I-10. Again, this is right near the frontage road of State Highway 46, right near our Bandera Road. It's going to be happening Sunday, September 12th uh, this year, actually, this month, actually, pardon me. I can't believe we're in September, uh, but starting at 6 a.m. and it's going to be going on for six weeks. So start planning those alternative routes and again, mark those calendars. But for now, uh, this is going to be the issue that we're going to be keeping a close eye on as well. And as always, was we keep the eyes on the road, you should as well. But move over and slow down, guys, when you see those flashing lights out there. Good reminder. Thank you, Stephen. What's going on, Justin? Yeah, Stephen, it is easy to forget that we're in September. Yeah. These, uh, yes. With these oh, yeah. going on. <laughs> I remind everybody that our hottest uh, number that we've ever seen here in San Antonio occurred in September, September 5th, 2000. We got up to 111. So it still gets hot this month, but we're hoping for some sort of a cool down down the line. It's not going to be anytime soon. Yesterday, our high temperature got up to 99. It was 103 Del Rio, 103 in Laredo. Most of Texas was baking yesterday. We're going to be right there again today. High pressure still in control. Heat advisories for parts of the area. It does not include our area, but down towards Corpus and Dallas. It, it hot is hot. It's still going to be hot today, regardless of whether or not we have an advisory in place. Heavy rain out west. We're not going to see any of that. So places like El Paso, even Amarillo getting some rain. And then we've been talking about the really heavy rain up across the northeast. It is moving up so that the floodwaters will start to recede, but not before they picked up over eight inches at Newark. They're close to New York City. Hartford over five inches. Boston, Philadelphia, Baltimore all got a lot of heavy rain yesterday. This was the remnants of Ida. A ton of tropical moisture combined with a storm system. And there you go. Those are the numbers you get. Uh, they're still going to be doing cleanup up there. Not to mention that Louisiana still has a long road ahead. Ida has done a lot of damage here across our country. Right now, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies at the airport, 80 degrees, southerly winds at seven miles per hour, feels like 85, brutal. We already have a heat index out there at this hour. 80 Canyon Lake, 79 New Braunfels, 82 Stinson, 73 up there in comfort, and still 85 in Del Rio. I keep waiting for that number to come down, it is not. Uh, so very hot start there. Heat index, as I mentioned, already in place. The heat index, the heat index right now in Del Rio is 92. Uh, that's what it feels like. Feels like 85 here in town, 83 in Pleasanton, and the heat index will likely jump up above 100. Uh, just about everywhere, minus the hill country today. I would imagine that uh, we get up a little bit hotter than what it shows there. 101, I think probably 102, 103 will be your feels like temperature this afternoon here in town. So be careful. Yes, we don't have those heat advisories, but it's still borderline dangerous here. And I think the uh, dew point does fall off some as we get into the weekend. So that's the good news. We'll see lower dew points. Flip side to that, the air temperature will come up, but it'll be more of a dry heat probably Saturday and Sunday with dew points in the low 60s, potentially. Here's what the forecast looks like today as the computer model sees it. A couple of isolated showers or storms. I-35 is kind of the dividing line here. I think east of that is probably your best shot if you're going to get any rain today. Anything we see will be few and far between. Tomorrow, maybe a slightly better chance here in San Antonio. Uh, we have it at about 20%, uh, 10% today. 98 Saturday, mostly sunny. 99 Sunday, mostly sunny. So we're right on the cusp there of 100 degrees. Labor Day, I'll caution you, there could be a thunderstorm or two during the afternoon, 98. And then we'll put some rain chances in next week. Right now, 30% chance Tuesday, 20% chance there on Wednesday as the pattern becomes a little more active. Uh, but we're still very much entrenched in this summer-like heat. Doesn't appear to go away anytime soon, guys. No, but at least there's a small chance on Labor Day Monday. There is a chance for some <laughs> rain. Uh, hopefully it doesn't interrupt any plans, and then maybe some more chances next week. As soon as you see anything resembling a cold front, will you run in here and tell us no matter what we're reading? Oh, man, it'll be uh, first. You'll be the first to know, okay. and Thank we'll you. post it all over social media. We'll be celebrating. Thank all you. Right. We'll be yeah. ready. <laughs> We're going to hold you to it. 553, <laughs> about 79 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, five, eight, four, fireball two, and your daily four, one, eight, six, four, fireball four. Cash five numbers, 112, 13, 15, 26. Lotto Texas, 15, 32, 38, 41, 48, and 51. And Powerball players, here are your numbers. If you don't already have them from last night's drawing, 10, 20, 29, 4851 Powerball 17 Power Play 2.
Good morning. Coming up, we have the very latest on that historic flooding that slammed parts of the Northeast overnight. States of emergency here in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. People stranded in their cars. The subway system shut down. Ginger and our entire storm team is on the ground with covering it all right here on GMA. Be sure to check out the list of pop-up COVID-19 vaccine clinics for this week right now on ksat.com. The first one taking place at 9 this morning at Las Palmas Library. Remember, you can also get your vaccine for free at your local pharmacy. Still ahead in the next hour at GMSA, scary scene from New York City. Subways washed out during heavy rains from Ida. We will have the very latest from this morning. And an elderly man hit by a car while crossing the street here in San Antonio. Happened on the northwest side. We've got details. And Transky flashing lights I-10 at Proband. It is affecting traffic, but not in a big way. Everybody is safely able to merge over to the left there just a bit. We'll check in with Stephen in a moment. This morning on GMSA, the U.S. Supreme Court refuses to stop a strict abortion law here in Texas. We're going to tell you what this could mean going forward. An unbelievable scene in New York City. The area drenched with heavy rains from the remnants of Ida. Central Park got upwards of three inches of rain in one hour's time. We'll have the latest. And here at home, we hit the hottest day of the year yesterday at 99 degrees. Right now, just 79 degrees. We'll be checking in with Justin soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. Our week is moving right along. You've made it to Thursday. It is September 2nd. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us. And for September, we are celebrating with hot temperatures so far. And brutal humidity. It's dangerous heat out there. Please take care of those pets, especially in those afternoon hours. Justin is in for Mike. Yeah, great advice. The humidity is going to be high enough today where the heat index is going to be right back up where we were yesterday, around 104 or so. And that's sort of the, the danger zone. We don't have heat advisories, but you got to be careful. The highs yesterday, 99 here in San Antonio. We got up to 100 in Pleasanton. It was actually 103 in Del Rio. Uh, 103 down there in Laredo, 105 in Catula, some big time numbers, and we're going to be right back there again today. We're already pretty warm, 79 at the airport, 74 Bandera, 74 Tarpley. Thankfully, we have dropped below 80 degrees this morning. A few clouds out there. Uh, the pollen count, mold is low, pigweed, fall elm, ragweed, all there. By the way, we are moving into fall elm and ragweed season so far. Haven't been too bad, but uh, we are headed that way. Probably going to see some growing numbers there. Forecast for today. We'll take it up to about 98 for high. There is a 10% chance of rain. A stray shower storm this afternoon, just like we've seen last couple of days with partly cloudy skies. Coming up, we're going to talk more about the Northeast, what's going on there. Uh, look at the tropics, and we'll have the latest on your seven-day forecast. Look ahead to Labor Day weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Let's get over to Stephen now for the latest on your morning commute. Some problems out there off I-10 at ProBand. Justin, we talked about this a little while ago. It's still being reported out there. As you can see from this shot at TransGuide, we do have some first responders out there working to clear the scene. Uh, still very dark, though. Uh, tough to make out exactly what happened out there, but you can see it looks like a shoulder lane right now is blocked off with those flares out there. It doesn't appear that it's impacting traffic right now. It's, it's pretty slow early where we're not seeing a lot of folks out there, uh, but this could change as uh, if it's still being reported and more people are getting out on the roadways. Uh, taking a Look again, that is I-10 eastbound at Probant. Again, no issues when it comes to causing any traffic delays, but of course use caution. Right now, these inbound times, though, are looking pretty good as well. If you're going to be traveling into the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments, a little time from Lytle on six, with 16 minutes on 35. If you're traveling from Highway 90, 18 minutes from Castroville right now. And if you're coming in from Bernie, uh, we are looking at just 25 minutes on I-10. Again, this is to the downtown San Antonio area. But the main thing we're going to be keeping a very close eye on, at least for now, is going to be this crash off I-10 at Proben. As always, use caution when you see those crashes out there, guys. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man is facing arson charges in connection to a fire at a northwest side apartment complex. This is 40-year-old Norman Jones. He was arrested back in June after a fire at the residences at Medical Center Apartments on Babcock. Here's a look from the scene. When we first covered the story for GMSA, the fire forced eight people out of their apartments. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Well, now Jones is facing arson charges in this case. New this morning, an 80 year old man is recovering after he was hit by a car while crossing the street. This happened around 830 last night in the 7100 block of Warsbach Road near Babcock. Police say the driver that hit the man stopped and tried to help. The man was taken to the hospital. His condition is not known at this time. No charges have been filed. 
Right now, the search is on for a missing San Antonio teen. Police say he suffers from a medical condition which requires a doctor's care. Take a closer look. 16-year-old Ryan Wesley Wren Jr. was last seen earlier yesterday on the northwest side of town on Shadow Glen, not far from Babcock and Medical. He has a surgical scar on his upper lip and wears glasses, as you can see. If you know where he is, please call the SAPD Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660. Breaking overnight, a divided U.S. Supreme Court refuses to stop a Texas law banning most abortions. ABC's Devin Dwyer has more on what this could mean for the future of Roe v. Wade. Good morning. The order from the Supreme Court came down just after midnight Eastern time, formally rejecting the request from those Texas abortion providers to put SB8 on hold. That leaves in place for now the most restrictive abortion law in the country, banning nearly all abortions in the second most populous state after six weeks of pregnancy. The vote was five to four. It was decided on largely technical grounds. The court's conservative justices saying the way the Texas law is designed deputizing private citizens to do the enforcement of the law presented complex and novel procedural questions that couldn't be resolved. The majority saying explicitly, however, that they are not addressing the constitutionality of the Texas law head on. Those legal challenges will continue, but the dissents in this case were intense. Justice Sonia Sotomayor overnight calling the decision simply stunning. She said, quote, presented with an application to enjoin a flagrantly unconstitutional law engineered to prohibit women from exercising their constitutional rights and evade judicial scrutiny. A majority of the justices have opted to bury their heads in the sand. And the chief justice, John Roberts, one of the conservatives joining with the liberals in dissent, he said he is aware of the impact this law. He would have held the status quo for now while those challenges continue. As far as the abortion clinics in Texas this morning, uh, they are remaining open. They are accepting patients at this time, but they are not providing those abortions after six weeks. Overnight, one of the leaders of those clinics said she is simply devastated. Devin Dwyer, ABC News, Washington. This morning, the remnants of Hurricane Ida blowing through the northeast of Mid-Atlantic with at least two tornadoes and at least eight deaths are now reported in New York, New Jersey, including a two-year-old boy. High winds and rains have destroyed several homes on the East Coast, left cars and roads underwater. The National Weather Service also confirming a tornado happened last night. Another video shows water rushing through Newark Liberty International Airport as a storm moved into the New York metro area. Weather Service recorded more than three inches of rain in New York's Central Park in just one hour. And flash flooding also drenching New York subway system, disrupting train services. Just take a look at the floodwaters just pouring onto the railway. As a result, many people were left stranded trying to find a way home. New York Transportation Authority says it's pumping water and trying to evacuate people on trains and platforms. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff says it is possible the U.S. will coordinate with the Taliban on future counterterrorism strikes in Afghanistan against ISIS militants or others. Army General Mark Milley says the Taliban is a ruthless group and, quote, whether or not they change remains to be seen, end quote. Made the comments just days after the final U.S. troops left Afghanistan. Milley and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin say it's hard to predict the future of the Taliban in Afghanistan. On to the coronavirus, the CDC asking people to reconsider their risks before traveling this long Labor Day weekend. The White House is also moving forward on booster shots. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, the CDC issuing a travel warning for Labor Day, telling vaccinated people to consider their risk and telling unvaccinated people not to travel at all. First and foremost, if you are unvaccinated, um, we would recommend not traveling. COVID hospitalizations across the country have just hit a seven month high. The Biden administration now moving forward on vaccine booster shots. FDA advisors will meet September 17th to consider Pfizer's booster shot application. Popular podcaster Joe Rogan has revealed he's positive for COVID. Throughout the night, I got fevers and sweats, and I knew what was going on. Months after he suggested young, healthy people don't need the vaccine. And now there's a new variant of the coronavirus. The World Health Organization is monitoring the Mu variant. More research is needed to determine if it's any more contagious. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York.
Today is National VJ Day, the observance of the Allied Forces victory over Japan in World War II. The six-year-long global war left as many as 80 million people dead. The announcement of Japan's surrender came on August 15, 1945, effectively bringing an end to the war. But it was September 2nd that Japan formally surrendered on board the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. And that's when President Harry Truman declared the day national. This all happened several months after the surrender of Nazi Germany. And time now is 6.09 and about 79 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, it's a fast food mystery. Why do McDonald's ice cream machines always seem to be out of service when you want a McFlurry? Details ahead. And the coronavirus continues to impact how much you pay at the pump. This and more after the break. Outside with live cam, plenty of humidity to go around. There is a chance of rain in Justin's forecast. Not a big one, but we'll take it. You're watching GMSA. We'll also check on traffic with Stephen. We are keeping a close eye on Wall Street this morning. The Nasdaq closed a record high yesterday. The S&P 500 rather also gained. Dow dipped just over 48 points. September kicked off with uh, renewed buying of tech stocks and private payroll data. Apple, Facebook, Amazon and Google owner Alphabet Incorporated all advanced. Oil prices are down after OPEC and its allies agreed to gradual oil output increases. This comes as COVID cases around the world are surging and many U.S. refineries remain offline. But OPEC raised its demand forecast for 2022 while facing pressure to accelerate production increases from the Biden administration. The Federal Trade Commission is now officially investigating a fast food mystery. Why are McDonald's McFlurry machines always broken? According to the Wall Street Journal, the breakdowns are so widespread because the machines are complicated to clean. That makes them susceptible to breaking down. There's a reason. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just me. I saw a story earlier this morning. There apparently, I guess there's a McFlurry tracker that shows which ones are offline. It's almost like wow. Waze. You know, rather than reporting speed trap, you report the, where the machines are working and where they aren't. That's really bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully That's how now widespread that widespread it is. Well, now that we know it's a huge problem, hopefully they'll they'll fix it. Let's check out traffic right now at 6:14. Stephen, what's up? Hey, good morning, everybody. And I used to like dipping my fries into the ice cream. I don't know if anyone else mm. likes to do that. You're not the only one. I know some people have done that with the fries at Wendy's. They dip it mm. in their frosty. The oh. frosty or a milkshake. No, Justin's sort. shaking his head. I'm out. Now. I'm not out for you, Justin. <laughs> hey, we talk about macaroni <laughs> ice cream on here on GMSA, but you know, hey, uh, let's get right now to the problem that we are spotting here. Here off I-10 at ProBant, though, we do have those flashing lights still out there. A crash reported that uh, has been there for a little while now. You can see that we do have traffic that is now picking up here at Trans or from the shot at Transguide right there on I-10, getting pretty busy. So let's see if it's impacting traffic right now. And thankfully, it doesn't look like it is. It's over there in those eastbound lanes of I-10 right at ProBant. But our system just picked up another crash not too far from there off I-37 northbound at exit 138A at South Cross Boulevard, not causing any issues there when it does come to those traffic delays, but some stalls that uh, we've been talking about throughout the morning. Uh, this one just coming up here off I-37, uh, I-35, pardon me, southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. Check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. But right now, uh, the main thing seems to be this crash here off I-10. That's going to be possibly causing some issues right now. Now that the morning's really getting going there again, as always, move over, slow down for those first responders who are working to clear the scene. Guys. It's really picking up out there. Yeah. Thank you very much, Stephen. Justin is on the lookout for our first cold front of the fall season, and so far, no. not a not a. Okay. Wow. <laughs> our McFlurries are melting. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> are. <laughs> Temperatures as hot as they've been. Yeah, we're on the lookout for the first front. We've put together a little climatology here. Now, this is a rather ambiguous idea, but when do we see our first? Uh, 10 degree temperature drop. That's what we'll call it. Uh, the last few years we've seen it uh, early October, maybe late, late September there in 2018, 2016 and 2017. Same story. Yesterday was a little, uh, yesterday. Last year was a little earlier, September 4th. But if you average it out, it's generally late September here in San Antonio for that first quote unquote front. We'll see if it pans out that way this year. There are no fronts in the forecast. Uh, nothing that's going to cool us down at least. There's the scene outside. We've got mostly cloudy skies, 79 degrees at the airport, 81 Stinson, 79 Kelly, 78 Randolph. Southerly breeze, anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll see that through the day. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s for the most part. We're at 80 Canyon Lake, 78 New Braunfels, 81 Stinson. 
and uh, 79 Pleasanton. The hot spot continues to be out there in Del Rio where it's still 84. No cool down at all. Two points are way up there in the mid to even upper 70s. These numbers will come down a little bit today, and I, my hope is that this weekend they'll drop into the low 60s and 50s during the afternoons. That'll help us out a little bit with this heat index, but not today. The heat index is going to be right back where it was yesterday. We got up to 104, but that feels like number here in town. 101 this afternoon, but I actually think it could be a little bit warmer than that. Probably, again, pretty close to yesterday. 105 Pleasanton, 108 potentially down there as you get down towards Katua. So the, the numbers, again, uh, just really, really hot today. And looking at the forecast, a couple of isolated showers and storms could pop up. I think that'll be east of I-35 if we see anything this afternoon. And then tomorrow, same story. Maybe a little better chance in San Antonio tomorrow for an isolated shower or storm. This is around 5 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a pop-up type situation, and the coverage will not be all that great. Heat advisories are in place down to our south and up to our north. We don't have heat advisories here, but we're on the cusp of of being at advisory level, so be careful out there. High pressure really is uh, dominating the weather right now. And on the edge of that high pressure, you got some pretty heavy rain out across parts of far west Texas and New Mexico. That's where there are flash flood watches in place. And we've been showing you pictures from New York and the Northeast. A lot of rain there overnight. You look at some of the numbers around New York City, 8.44 inches. That was at Newark. Hartford, 5.11. Philadelphia, 3.53. So there was a ton of rain yesterday. Thankfully, it's moving out. And this was the remnants of Ida uh, that brought all that heavy rain. Speaking of the tropics, uh, here's where we're seeing right now. We've got a Hurricane Larry out there in the Atlantic. This is a good looking storm. It became a hurricane this morning. It's going to be a major hurricane. The good news here, though, I think it avoids any land. It's going to start curving to the north. Should get picked up and stay out over open water. The one area that we uh, probably need to watch here is in the Caribbean. Just a 20% chance of development. And this little wave is does not look good at all. It's very, very ragged. But uh, there is a chance it could develop if it got into the Gulf of Mexico, and that's a big if. It's got to cross over some land here. We'll see what happens. We'll certainly watch it for you. Uh, looking at the extended forecast, 10% chance of rain today here in San Antonio, 20% chance tomorrow. The weekend will be hot. Good news, we have lower humidity levels, and so the mornings and evenings may feel a little bit better. 20% uh, chance of rain late on Monday for your Labor Day, and another slight chance there Tuesday and Wednesday, but all in all, the weekend looks good, just hot. Hot. Yeah, yeah. but lower humidity, not too bad. That's true. Yep. Thank you, Justin. 619, about 79 degrees. Hey, coronavirus vaccination cars are becoming a growing concern as more places are requiring people to be vaccinated. That's ahead in your GMA first look. Get to that story in a few minutes, but first, the San Antonio Missions taking care of business against the Amarillo Sod Poodles in a doubleheader yesterday. San Antonio finished with a shutout in Game 1, final score 2-0. Missions win a close one in Game 2, the final 5-4. The series against Midland continues tonight at 7.05 at Wolf Stadium. We're back right after this. Hi, so you're the scientist here. Does my Aveeno Daily Moisturizer really make my dry skin healthier in one day? It's true, Jen. This prebiotic old formula moisturizes to help prevent dry skin. Impressive. Aveeno, healthy. It's our nature. Try the body wash too. When you skip the rinse with Finish Quantum, you save up to 20 gallons of water each time. Finish Quantum with Active Blue technology has the power to remove the toughest stains without pre rinsing for dishes so clean they shine. Join Finish and skip the rinse to save our water. Fryers is always so delicious. I can tell that they use your milk method. Great job. You're welcome. Breyer's Natural Vanilla is made with 100% grade A milk and cream and only sustainably farmed vanilla. Better starts with Breyer's. Everyone's looking forward to the school year. But sometimes, the best part about being back is the excitement of heading home. Coles. In this morning's GMA First Look, cracking down on fake vaccination cards. More than a dozen frontline workers in New York charged in an alleged COVID vaccination card scheme, accused of forging COVID-19 vaccine cards. The Manhattan District Attorney saying some of the suspects charged with buying those cards work in hospital and nursing home settings. It's completely unacceptable and 
and obviously undermines public safety and undermines confidence in public safety. The alleged mastermind, 31-year-old Jasmine Clifford of New Jersey, who authorities say sold at least 250 forged COVID vaccination cards through her now defunct Instagram accounts under the alias Anti-Vax Mama for up to $200 per card. So how did authorities know her card was fake? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. 24 minutes past the hour, about 79 degrees. And we have a lot more heading your way in our next half hour, including the aftermath of Ida. Right now, the northeast is being slammed by heavy flooding. We're going to take you to the area's hardest hit. And of course, Ida impacted animals in places like Louisiana. Now, the San Antonio Humane Society is stepping in to help up an amazing overnight operation. Now, an urgent call for supplies has gone out. Katrina Weber will join us live with details. And taking a look out at the Rosewood Trans Sky, things are a little slower there at I-10 at Proband after a crash, but it looks like they're slowly clearing that area up. We'll be right back. The San Antonio Humane Society is offering you a chance to help some of the victims of Hurricane Ida. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They have more than 100 animals here from Louisiana who need homes in San Antonio. I'll tell you more about it. Outside with live cam, so hot yesterday. We've only dropped down to about 80 degrees this morning. Is there any relief in sight? We're checking with Justin in just a second. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Thursday. It is September 2nd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you survived the great heat yesterday. We made it up to 99, still not officially triple digits, but Justin was saying it's kind of the same. Kind yeah. of. Well, because you factor in the humidity, it feels like 104. I mean, we're, we're splitting hairs here, but it's it's a mental thing. We just yes. don't want to hit 100. Yes. Uh, we've got some stats on that coming up here in just a little bit. First, we got to talk football. I got my football socks on. I'm ready Thursday night. Oh, you guys, yeah, I'll prove it to you. There you go. Ah, there you, you go. It's yes, there. Uh, I've been waiting to do this, too. Football forecast. Here we go. Get the kick. All right. <laughs> I think you hit it with your knee, but that's okay. No, no, it made it in. I that's tried. Fun. It was all about the effort, Mark. All about the effort. Uh, 94 kickoff, 90 at halftime. If you're going out to the games tonight, just beware that it is going to be hot. Find some shade. Uh, partly cloudy skies. There could be a stray storm or two. Can't rule it out. 70 is right now. 79 Port SA, 76 Rio Medina, 73 Bernie State, 79 Canyon Lake. And uh, here in San Antonio, we're seeing mostly cloudy skies. We mentioned that heat index today in the stray storm. Uh, northeast, we've been talking about this all morning. Flash flooding there. There were tornadoes yesterday, some damage. And this weekend, we're looking for less humidity, but still hot. You'll see those temperatures get close to 100. Forecast for today. Up to 98, we're going to put in a 10% chance of rain here in San Antonio. If you're east of town, your rain chances are a little bit better. We'll see another slight chance coming up tomorrow as well. All right, Stephen, you're pumped about football too, right? Yeah, I just don't know if I can do the uh, the, the same kick, Justin. I don't, my legs don't go that <laughs> that high there. That's all right. <laughs> uh, good news, though. Uh, that crash that we've been talking about for a while has now cleared out. You can see I-10 at Pro Band. Whoa, that was pretty crazy out there at trans guy. It looks like we got a different shot. Now traffic is moving as now we have this different shot there. Thanks to our friends over there for getting us this shot showing how traffic is moving, but we are seeing some residual slowdowns there off I 10 eastbound where that crash was reported again right at ProBent. Uh, let's jump over to another crash though, not too far from there. I 37 northbound at exit 138 a at South Cross Boulevard, uh, not seeing any of the same residual traffic or uh, delays that we just saw with the previous one, but use caution out there uh, jumping up to a stall. So reported out there of I 35 southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. It has been a morning of stalls, y'all. So let's jump up all the way over here to I 35 northbound at Forum Road, where another stall has been reported. As always, check those vehicles before you hit the roadway. But for now, it's inbound time time. So let's go ahead and take a look right now. Uh, I 10 on coming in from Bernie, 25 minutes. Same for Mulverde coming in from 281. And we're looking at just 26 minutes on 35 to the downtown San Antonio area. One last look here as traffic is now moving nice and smoothly. But again, be prepared to slow down because there's still some residual traffic out there or slowdowns uh, out there at I-10 eastbound, but looks like things are moving, guys. Thank you, Justin. 
uh, Stephen, apologize. You're St Justin, you're Stephen. We'll get to both back here in just a second. Our top story this morning, more than 100 cats and dogs from Louisiana are in need of a forever home here in San Antonio. Those animals all essentially evacuees from Hurricane Ida. They arrived at the San Antonio Humane Society early this morning. Katrina Weber is there in the 4800 block of Fredericksburg Road with a live report. And Katrina, how soon can people adopt them? Well, if all goes well, the San Antonio Humane Society could begin adopting them out as soon as early next week. Right now, uh, they say that the, all of those animals, all the cats and dogs, will need to undergo a medical assessment first. Well, those animals for now probably are all resting after that very long drive. Workers began unloading the 86 cats and 50 dogs and carriers from trucks a few hours ago. Those animals all were either in shelters there already or surrendered by owners who couldn't care for them during the hurricane. The San Antonio Humane Society answered that call for help during the storm from those shelters in areas affected by the storm. We're able to take in their animals and get them up for adoption quicker and be able to free those shelters in Louisiana so they can take in more animals. Well, this is the largest arrival of animals from there but not the first. Last Saturday, the Humane Society took in 17 pets, and the goal is to keep them here for just a few days before they're adopted out. Now, if you would like to find out more about the adoptions, or if you'd like to help in another way, you can visit the Humane Society's website. That is sahumane.org. They say that they have a lot of extra mouths to feed now, and they could use some more supplies. So again, head to that website if you'd like to find out more information. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Meanwhile, the remnants of Ida are delivering a historic soaking to a large part of the northeast U.S., forcing a state of emergency declaration in some areas. At least eight deaths being reported in New York and New Jersey as a result of all that flooding. Here's ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi with more. Overnight, dramatic images of the historic flash flood emergency in the northeast. Wow. What's left of Hurricane Ida pummeling New Jersey, where at one point Wednesday night, five inches of rain fell per hour. And Newark Airport flooded. <laughs> the airport suspending all flights last night. And for the first time ever, the National Weather Service issuing a flash flood emergency for New York City. Water seen rushing into the subway station. Subway service halted overnight. And in the Bronx, more than two dozen cars bobbing like bath toys on this highway. This man climbing out of his window to safety. I was driving down and then I was taking my time when I see the car start floating, you know. The car just start floating and shut off. And then I look crazy, you know. This new video showing the damage in a southern New Jersey neighborhood. The family living in this home racing to the basement when the twister approached. But if you look just next door, that house is what actually bore the brunt of um, the tornado in this neighborhood. And outside Washington, D.C., a 19-year-old man died after his basement apartment flooded. Residents of the apartment complex saying the rush of water came out of nowhere. Like the whole living room was floated. It was literally rushing to our rooms. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And new this morning, we are learning more details about administration, administrative issues happening at South San ISD. And just hours after receiving the notice that the Texas Education Agency is appointing a special monitor to South San ISD, the Board of Trustees also voted to reprimand Superintendent Mark Pugh for his conduct during a closed session meeting back on August 18th. The board also held a heated discussion regarding allegations against trustees who have engaged in bullying against other district employees and board board members. In particular, trustee Gilbert Rodriguez is now banned from communicating directly with TEA agents and legal counsel. The letter from the TEA says if the issues are not corrected while the monitor is in place, the state agency may conduct additional investigations that could result in further sanctions. This morning, we are getting a closer look at a man accused of neglecting horses in Von Army. This is 62 year old Stephen David Olson, now in custody, facing 10 counts of animal cruelty. Yesterday, he didn't have much to say as he walked in front of our cameras. Bear County Sheriff's Office first was called to the home southwest of San Antonio after reports of malnourished horses. Deputy sees eight of them back on August 13th. 
Now, the two counts of animal cruelty were added after investigators discovered two of the horses were pregnant. Investigators say the horses had even tried taking bites out of wooden poles and the fencing out of hunger. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. New overnight, a divided U.S. Supreme Court is allowing a Texas law that bans most abortions to remain in place for now. The court voted 5-4 to four late last night to deny an emergency appeal from abortion providers and others that sought to block enforcement of the law that went into effect yesterday. The majority said those bringing the case had not met the high burden required for a stay of the law, but the justices also suggested that their order likely isn't the last word on whether the law can stand because other challenges to it can still be brought. The new law prohibits abortions once medical professionals can detect cardiac activity, usually around six weeks. It is the strictest law against abortion in the United States since the high court's landmark Roe versus Wade decision back in 1973. Cases of coronavirus in hospitals continue to decrease. 1,302 patients remain hospitalized. There are 18 new COVID-related deaths. The seven-day average here in Bear County is now sitting at about 1,200 new cases per day. Floresville ISD is extending Labor Day weekend to address the rising COVID cases. The district posted on its website and Facebook page there will be no school from September 3rd through the 7th. During that time, all buses and campuses will be deep cleaned and teachers and staff will have time for academic planning. According to the district COVID-19 dashboard, there are 239 active cases among students and staff on its four campuses. Other small districts have announced closures for this week as well, including Brackett ISD, ISD, Lakey ISD, and Medina ISD. I want to let you know about some pop-up vaccine clinics happening this week, including one happening this morning at Las Palmas Library. That starts at 9 a.m. You can also get your vaccine for free at your local pharmacy. And happening today, the San Antonio Police Department will hold an asset seizure auction that includes items like tools, Jordans, and Spurs collectors memorabilia. The auction will be held at 6.30 p.m. this evening at the VFW located at 650 East White. Now that's near Roosevelt Avenue on the south side. Bidders can begin viewing items at 5.30 p.m. and items can be purchased by a card or cash according to police. Now for more information and for the fullest list of all those items, you can check out our website site at kset.com. Apparently several pairs of those designer sneakers up for auction as well. 639, 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a local nonprofit and its mission to bring joy to pediatric cancer patients. We'll be back after this. But first, the KSAT 12 MeTV Texas Sports Production Game of the Week is featuring the Brandeis Broncos against the Warren Warriors tonight. This is our second live broadcast of high school football in San Antonio on our 12.2 over the air channel. Kickoff is slated for 7 p.m. over at Gustafson Stadium. And don't forget to join us on our big game coverage app this week for live broadcasts of other Texas high school football games in and around San Antonio, courtesy of Texas Sports Productions. This week, it'll include Judson versus Lake Travis live from Austin, a huge matchup. Now we'll be back. Don't worry about thing, cause there's This is Maddie Kramer. Her mother, Pammy Kramer, says her daughter was a dream child, an amazing daughter. She was full of energy. She was spunky. She had curly hair. She loved to sing and dance. She loved to play. Goldilocks met up with Bill. On April of 2017, at two and a half years old, Maddie was diagnosed with a rare cancer, ATRT, a primary central nervous system tumor that usually begins in the brain or spinal cord, the start of a difficult journey for the Kramers. I mean, in the early days of her cancer journey, obviously very dark days. And that was my big concern is like, will she be Maddie again? That's me. I'm serious. And two months after I'm Maddie's so first happy. surgery, Pammy says she was back to being herself. We were very blessed and she was able to continue to sing and dance and play for many moments during her eight and a half month battle with cancer. Maddie lost her battle to cancer on January of 2018. She was three and a half years old, but they didn't let the pain of Maddie's death keep them from giving back. Maddie gave them. They found it dancing while cancering. 
a nonprofit dedicated to bringing joy through smile packs for pediatric cancer patients. And it was just a no brainer on what to do. We knew that mission of bringing joy was so in line with what she did during her journey that we knew that would be the mission. And then um, it just went from there. Scott and Pammy bringing that mission to Methodist Children's Hospital. Jenna Painter, a child life specialist at Methodist, says the smile packs have definitely made a huge impact. So these are some backpacks filled with age appropriate toys and rim decorations, just different things to bring smiles and joy to families that are inpatient in the hospital, um, beginning such a such a big fight as childhood cancer. Pammy says they are coming up on three years since they created the nonprofit and say it's hard to forget their last moments with Maddie. We were looking out, looked onto another building that had pictures of it. Um, like people put up pictures in their windows for the kids in the hospital to look out and see, which is amazing. And um, there was one picture of a, a big son and she was asking about it. She was asking about the sun. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> we continue to shine her light. Pammy Kramer says Methodist Children's Hospital is their 20th hospital partnership in the country and their first hospital partnership in the state of Texas. They say every child diagnosed with cancer at this facility will receive a little bit of normalcy and joy through the foundation Smile Packs. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And I also found the website dancingwhilecancering.org. Very good. And right now at 646 and things are starting to look a little shady there on I-35 in Brooklyn. Yeah, you know, we're off to we've been off to a pretty busy start here for this Thursday as we inch closer to the weekend. 35 at the upper level shot here at Brooklyn Avenue does show that we do have uh, some flashing lights out there and you can see right now traffic is starting to build from this shot at trans guide and taking a look right now at the, our maps. This does show a stalled vehicle off I-35 southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. You can see but in both lanes we're starting to see some of that congestion building up, especially now that more people are getting out on the roadways, but it seems those stalls seem to be the trending issue right now. I-35 northbound at Forum Road. We do still have a stall reported up there near Live Oak. Uh, check those vehicles before you hit the roadways, but right now, uh, overall, it's been shaping up to be pretty nice. We still had that crash that was reported out there uh, off I-10 eastbound at Proband, but it looks like that may have cleared already. We're not seeing any issues out there from those shots at Transguide, but taking one last look here at 35, just use caution when you see those flashing lights out there. I want to kick it over to Justin, though, if I had a football to with the weather. Thank you, sir. And uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I need to it is it is football season, right? And we we're going to get some warm temperatures uh, this afternoon and this evening. When's the last time we hit 100? Let's go back 365 days. It's been a full year. September 1st, 2020 was the last time that happened. Uh, we got awful close yesterday, 99 here in San Antonio. Didn't quite get there. These were the high temperatures across the state yesterday. 96 San Angelo, 103 Del Rio, 99 in Dallas, 97 in Houston. It was a really hot day here across the state. There are some heat advisories posted down towards Corpus and up towards the Dallas area as high pressure is built in, and that uh, is really keeping things fairly quiet. We have an outside chance for a shower storm today. There's some heavier rain off to our west. And then, of course, we've been talking about uh, the heavy rain across parts of New York and the Northeast uh, a little bit earlier this morning. Yesterday, there were uh, five reports of tornadoes across parts of Maryland and New Jersey. So that's where the really active weather is. That's from the remnants of Ida. Outside here in San Antonio, sun is on its way up. 79 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, southerly winds at about 6. It feels like 83 out there. So we're already looking at a heat index. 73 Bernie State, 73 Lost Maple, 79 down there in Pleasanton, 84 still in Del Rio, 73 in Rock Springs. It has not cooled down at all. The heat index uh, in Del Rio still at 90. Pretty impressive. Uh, we've already got a heat index in a lot of spots today, and that heat index will be up around, I'd say, 100, 300, 400 here in San Antonio today. That's where it was yesterday. And the heat index is going to stay right there around 100 next few days, maybe coming down a little bit over the weekend because we have some lower humidity. but the air temperature comes up, so it's just kind of like a trade off. Uh, some rain chances also creep back into the picture early next week. We'll have some today, isolated shower storm east of I-35 and some chances tomorrow uh, with uh, just 20% chance and say around the area. But over the weekend, uh, the rain chances go away because of that uh, lower humidity 
and uh, just a little bit more of a quiet pattern. 97, 98, uh, the high temperature today, 10% chance of rain there uh, from about noontime through 8 p.m. Best chances I mentioned will be east of I-35. Extended forecast. We'll go uh, 96 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain, 98 Saturday, 99 Sunday. So that's when we get close to that triple digit mark. Mostly sunny skies. Overnight lows a little better though, <laughs> mid 70s. And then uh, Labor Day, 20% chance of rain late uh, with uh, partly cloudy skies Tuesday and Wednesday. About a 30% chance of rain on Tuesday, 20% chance there on Wednesday. We're also watching the tropics too. A couple systems out there, one in particular. Uh, there around Central America that we'll keep an eye on right now. It looks like there's low chances of development, guys. Justin, if we did an office pool, what day would you put down on your square for, for pick hitting 100? I, I think it's probably Sunday will be our best okay. shot. Okay. It's gonna be it's gonna be a close call. All right, I've got Sunday. I mean, we yeah. want to keep that stack going. We want to keep it going know. right into next year before I we know. get 100 again. Yeah. We'll see. And it's it it could happen any day. Well, maybe the small rain chances will help Monday. Maybe to, okay. keep, to keep things down. Changing my there pick. There you go. 651, about 79 degrees. Trees, they keep us cool, they clean our air, but did you know they also help fight storm water? I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA. How our local trees combat storm runoff. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 79 degrees. Uh, not too bad. We're not in the 90s yet, but we will be this afternoon. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up, we have the very latest on that historic flooding that slammed parts of the Northeast overnight. States of emergency here in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. People stranded in their cars. The subway system shut down. Ginger and our entire storm team is on the ground with covering it all right here on GMA. Morning is getting going, but things are slowing down from the shot at Transguy 35 at St. Mary's. Uh, take a look right now as we can show you that there is a shoulder lane or lane blocked off there with some crews out there working to assist a driver who has a stalled vehicle. Uh, this is reported at I-35 south, I southbound at the upper level of Brooklyn Avenue, but check out these northbound lanes. Also seen a slowdown there as well. Crash causing some slowdowns here off I-10 eastbound at I-35 exit 153. Use some caution out there this morning, but right now these inbound times one last look are looking pretty Pretty good if you're traveling to the downtown San Antonio area from any of these neighboring communities. But right now, just be prepared to slow down if this is through your morning commute, Justin. Thanks, sir. Mostly cloudy skies out there right now. We'll see about a 10% chance of rain today. It's low end. Uh, east of I-35, best chance for uh, any shower or storm today. That'll be the case tomorrow, too. 20% chance. Some lower humidity over the weekend. It'll be awful hot. 99 on Sunday. And look for some slight rain chances late on Monday. Another uh, few chances there Tuesday and Wednesday as well, guys. So slightly lower humidity. If you feel a little bit better this weekend. The mornings and the late evenings. Ah, well. yeah. I'd say that's uh, the case. The asterisk, yeah. but exactly. that will help a little bit. <laughs> or that's in right. the shade. That too. That's true. Very yeah. good. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.